Hi guys, welcome back to my channel for another video and welcome if you are new. My name is Michelle and in today's video I'm sharing with you guys week 26 of my pregnancy. So I know I say it every single time, I can't believe I'm such far along in my pregnancy. It is crazy to say that this is my last week of my second trimester, like this is crazy. And then we are moving on to that home stretch of pregnancy which is holy moly it's going to be absolutely chaotic but so much fun and just like getting everything planned and ready to go for this baby girl that's going to be joining us in a few short months it's going to be so much fun and i cannot believe it so in this pregnancy update i'm going to be talking about everything in regards to baby stats mommy stats, my symptoms, anything new that is going on this week because as we are moving along further in the pregnancy, there's gonna be so much more planning and so many more exciting things. I'm also gonna be doing a lot more pregnancy and baby related videos, how I'm planning to have a natural birth, how I'm getting ready for birth, hospital bag videos, uh, baby hauls, and so, so much more. So if you guys are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn your bell on so that you don't miss when I post future videos. All right, so diving right in with baby stats, using the Bump app, it says that the baby is the size of kale, which can differ quite a bit from sizing, but it also says the baby is about 14 inches long for a proper reference, and about one and three quarter pounds. So the baby is definitely getting bigger, taking more room up in my abdomen and uterus, which is so exciting. It's really nice to see how much she's going to be thriving in the next couple months putting on weight, just fin finalizing all of that development, which is super exciting. It says that baby's eyes are forming, but they won't open for another couple weeks. It also says that the baby ha now has eyelashes, which is super cute, super awesome. I cannot wait to see what her little face looks like. Ryan and I were actually talking about that this week, trying to figure out if she's going to look like Easton or one of the other boys. If you guys are new, we have three boys and I have one from a previous relationship, Ryan has one from a previous relationship as well, and then we have Easton together. So it's going to be really, really nice to see as a girl if which one of her brothers she looks more like or if she looks like me because none of my children look like me, they all look like their daddies. And it would be really cute to have a little girl that looks like me, I don't know. But I know that is super far-fetched, but I'm just so, so excited to finally be able to retire my boy mom title and just have a little princess. It's going to be so fun and glamorous and glitzy. Even though she's probably gonna be a tomboy for having three brothers, it is going to be just so much fun to be able to uh, dress up a little girl instead of a little boy. So it's just gonna be super different. And we are just so, so thrilled to get to do this. It also says that baby's getting his or her immune system ready for the outside world by soaking up a ton of your antibodies. That's why it is so crucial to take your prenatals, eat a healthy, well-balanced diet, exercise, drink a ton of water, and try to eliminate all of those toxins that you're putting into your body because you are growing and nurturing a little human, a little life, and you want this little life to thrive as much as she can or he can. It also says the baby is now taking breaths of amniotic fluid to practice for the outside world. So that is pretty much 26 weeks of baby stats. Now moving on to me, symptoms, anything that is going on this week. To be honest, symptoms have been pretty repetitive in the past couple weeks. The one new symptom that I've been having are increasing Braxton Hicks contractions. I actually feel feel quite a bit of tightening multiple times a day. I did have loads of them with Easton as well and I was a little bit more concerned because with Alex's pregnancy I did not have any Braxton Hicks until the day I went into labor which I guess aren't Braxton Hicks at that point but with Easton's I had so many Braxton Hicks that I was actually admitted to hospital for fear of preterm labor because I actually went into preterm labor with Alex at 34 weeks and then they were able to stop the labor till almost 38 weeks which was super good so I was really worried with Easton's pregnancy this time around, I am not super worried. I'm just taking it as it is. I know that there are gonna be contractions, there are gonna be Braxton Hicks. There's gonna be some discomfort, some pressure, some lightning crotch later on in pregnancy, and that is just what is getting our body ready for delivery and all of that stuff. So I'm just taking it. They are not painful, a little bit uncomfortable. The cramps are pretty uncomfortable, but besides that, I am doing a lot better. The second symptom that I had was a lot of constipation in the past couple weeks. I know it's TMI, I'm sorry, but this is a pregnancy update and 
So many things happen with our body in pregnancy, nothing to be embarrassed about, so why not just talk about them? So I had a ton of constipation, I actually started changing my diet, uh, reducing a lot of dairy, reducing a lot of gluten and wheat and stuff like that, and adding a ton of nutritious, fibrous fruit and vegetables, and I could say that my body, my clock, everything has completely switched over, and I am feeling so much better, so much less uh, lethargic and tired and my body is working so so much better so i am so grateful for that it's not easy to change eating habits and to eat healthy if it's going to do your body some good why not just move all the rest of the stuff aside and try and eat as healthily as you can i'm not saying that my whole diet is super healthy because i would be lying to you guys and i don't want to do that but I try and eat healthy as best as I can. Another symptom that I've been feeling is an increase in hunger, and I know this is to be expected as you move on in your pregnancy and baby is uh, gaining a ton of weight, like a quarter pound a week to half a pound a week, and so on, your body is going to need more fuel to nourish it, a lot of healthy foods, a lot of foods with carbs, things that are definitely gonna sustain you, so that's how I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to eat, if I'm eating carbs, I eat like oatmeal packed with fruit, I also like to eat um, whole grain sprouted bread with some peanut butter on it. I'll do some eggs with some salsa and some veggies inside. Things that are definitely gonna keep me full because when I wake up in the morning, I am so, so hungry. Like, so hungry, if I don't eat within the first five minutes of being awake, I'm actually nauseous and sick to my stomach because I'm starving. So I start eating right away when I wake up. I was trying to do intermittent fasting before this pregnancy, but there's no way I could do that in pregnancy. I, there's just no way. So I try to eat a very full, nutritious, whole food uh, breakfast to try and keep me going and then just eat other foods throughout the day. Just being mindful of how much that I'm eating, but I am so, so hungry on any given day. You have no idea. And I used to be able to go like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and not be hungry within those five, six hours. But now if I don't eat within three hours, like I'll have my breakfast around 7.30, by 10.30 I am like famished if I don't have a snack. So I actually had my breakfast this morning. I just had a snack, it's about 11 o'clock right now. I just had a snack which was a banana with some peanut butter on it and that should keep me full until about 12.30 or one o'clock or something like that. All right, so moving on, I have been having some headaches throughout the day. I really don't know what's causing them. I know that they're really common in pregnancy. I'm trying to drink my water, trying to have my one cup of caffeine every single morning. It's really hard to drink coffee for me in pregnancy. I used to drink like three coffees a day and now I could barely drink through one. So I guess that's just my body telling me not to do it. But I try and have it anyways because I find it gives me a little bit of a headache if I don't. I'm sorry, I know that's like an addictive personality thing, but it's just what my body has been used to. But I've definitely cut it down quite a bit. But I know that hormones are definitely having something to do with the headaches and the migraines. All right, so now that we're done with all of those glamorous symptoms, I'm gonna move on to new things this week and things that I'm planning in the upcoming weeks. So I actually just got this book maybe like two weeks ago. It's the Ina Mays uh, Guide to Childbirth. So if you guys don't know, I have had two previous natural, unmedicated, very low intervention births. They both went really well. One of them from beginning to end was three hours and 10 minutes and the other one was three hours and 22 minutes. That was from the first actual contraction, which is when my water broke both times in the middle of the night and both babies were born within that time frame which is incredible and I'm so thankful to have really quick labors and you know pretty um, uncomplicated labors and deliveries and all of that. But those three hours were the most intense three hours of my entire life. If you go from zero to one centimeter to 10 centimeters and delivering your baby, the pushing and the whole thing, especially for a first baby uh, within three hours, those are gonna be whew, like the most intense three hours of your entire life. Like cut off my head, cut off my right leg because that is pretty much how bad it felt. Alex's labor and delivery wasn't too bad. I was in, I was younger, I was in better shape. Um, I don't know, I just felt more confident during that labor. With Easton's labor, I was tired, a little bit more overweight, um, hadn't exercised as much in pregnancy, and it just was really, really difficult. He was a little bit bigger. He was seven pounds, eight ounces. He had a pretty large head. I lost consciousness a few times in labor. It was something else, like it was a difficult labor and I know that it has only been 18 months, but I'm really striving to um, get more knowledge and educate myself a little bit better when it comes to natural childbirth because I'm adamant that that's what I wanna do. 
but I really need to find a different approach because I really don't want to go through that grueling pain and agony from Easton's. I'm actually planning on starting to read this in the next couple weeks. I have been so busy with the holidays as I'm sure all of you guys have as well. But I am going to start reading this, um, yeah, in the next couple weeks. Take some notes from it. This was definitely highly recommended to me, so I'm super excited. I actually picked this one up on Amazon, and I will link it down below. If you guys are interested, I'll talk about it more in future pregnancy updates when I start reading it. Can't talk about it now because I haven't even read the back of the book yet. It's just been sitting up here on my dresser, but I'm just really excited to get into it. I'm not a reader. I love to read when it comes to things that are going to educate me and... Uh, true stories, documentaries, biographies, autobiographies, things like that. I'm just not like a fiction reader, so I could probably get through this rather quickly, and it's something that's definitely going to encourage me. And talking about labor, I have also thought about doing hypnobabies or hypnobirthing or anything that's going to help my body and mind really relax during labor because if they call it labor for a reason, it is a lot of work. It is very, very difficult on your body, and it's harder to give birth when you're stressed and tense and in pain and freaking out. So I was definitely thinking of looking into hypno babies. If you guys have done that in the past, let me know your experience. Let me know how well it worked for you. Um, as a mommy of three already, I don't have loads of time to invest in something like that. I will do it if it's gonna be beneficial to me and the baby as well. So just let me know in the comments down below what labor techniques you guys use that were all natural, low intervention, that definitely helped you guys um, throughout the whole process. All right, and lastly, before I let you guys go, I am doing the glucose test this week. I'm a little bit late, but with the holidays, and then we actually just came back yesterday from traveling for a few days out of town for Alex's hockey tournament, and we're actually leaving again on Friday for Aiden's hockey tournament. So it has been pretty busy, but I'm doing the glucose test this week. My doctor says as long as I do it between 24 and 27 weeks or 28 weeks, that would be okay. So I'll let you guys know when I do see the doctor at 28 weeks how the um, glucose results went and all that and then all of my other medical stats when it comes to blood pressure and heart rate and baby's heart rate and all of that as well. Anyways guys, thank you so much for joining me in this pregnancy update. I'm so, so happy to have each and every one of you guys here sharing this journey with me. It's such a fun experience to get to share all of this with you guys and just look back at all of it the memories and also get all of your really nice comments. You guys are so, so kind and I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you. Before I let you guys go, as usual, I'm gonna show you guys my baby bump and then I'll say bye and see you next week. Bye guys.